Hello and welcome to Deftoe by Metals Prick Up Your Ears. That's right, Deftoe by Metals Prick Up Your Ears is back due to popular demand. And... Okay, well, due to me being obsessed with metal and wanting to talk about it even if no one's listening or watching. It's a show where I talk about new releases from the month just past. This episode I'm going to be talking about at the month of November 2020. In November I've been listening to a little bit of old school stuff. Uh, as you saw at the beginning of the show, I picked up a copy of Tomb of the Mutilated by Cannibal Corpse from uh, the mighty mighty Utopia Records in Sydney. Uh, this is definitely a big part of my teenage years, a big part of me discovering extreme metal, death metal, that kind of stuff. Uh, so this has been getting a few spins on the record player lately. I've also been listening to a lot of old Scorpions. Scorpions. But not just that, I've also been listening to some new releases and I've picked a handful of new releases from the month of November to talk to you about here. We're going to kick it off in the Netherlands with a little band called Ofast. They have released an album, the name of which I am going to screw up. I believe it's called Tufelsgeist. And you can pick that up now on Van Records. Have a listen. So as far as I can translate, or as far as Google can translate, Tufels Geist. Tufels, the devil. Geist means spirit. Devil's spirit, perhaps? Would be rather fitting for this album, as they released uh, their own distilled gin along with the album. And apparently this album details the stages of intoxication in form of music. Uh, as they say in the notes of the album, uh, the intoxication starts with an almost euphoric state, but it slowly devolves in a downward spiraling delirium. And that's pretty much what you get with the album. The first track has a lot of light sounding, very uh, angelic, melodious synths, synthesized strings. Uh, but then when you get to the last track, it's just nothing but gloomy, dark, noisy, evil soundscape with a lot of guttural chanting and screeches littered throughout. Uh, everything in between is great too, just slow, sludgy, pounding drums, despairing vocals. I feel like it's a little bit of a different vibe to this band's earlier stuff. It's, it's less of a black metal album. I mean... They've been called a black metal band. I think I think they break out of that mold uh, quite a lot. There's a lot of clean vocal in their work, a lot of chanting and meditative kind of sounds, uh, a lot of slow paced kind of heavy pounding stuff in there. And you get that in this album, really good production, I, I thought. For really interesting music. And I haven't tasted the gin, but if you have, let me know in the comments. I'm sure it's probably great. So that's Earthhouse with Two Fools Geist. Now this next one is uh, kind of in the realm of black metal. It used to be in the realm of black metal. Very different sounding now. From the US, it's a band called Liturgy. The album is called Origin of the Alimonies and it's an independent release and you can hear it here.
This is a strange one. The band has a big complicated history and I would do a disservice if I was to try to unpack everything about this band here. I will give you a little bit of background though just from my personal experience with the band. The band is the brainchild of a person called Hunter Hunt Hendricks. They've had a rotating uh, lineup. The first uh, lineup, once they started to garner some success, split, and then it was just Hunter, then it was a couple other people. It, it's been all over the place, really. I discovered them, I think it was around 2011, with the album Aesthetica. Around the same time, Hunter released a manifesto, the liturgy manifesto called Transcendental Black Metal, a vision of apocalyptic humanism. I remember reading it through the time. I just kind of wrote it off as fairly pretentious at the time. And I think a lot of other people too. I think there were like the true necro cult black metalers who took to their keyboards when this manifesto came out and it's like, how dare someone try to tell us what black metal is and what do those big words mean? There's a lot of philosophy in their religion, a lot of what black metal should be, all kinds of heavy philosophical things that might have been the ramblings of a man, madman or it's so genius that I didn't understand it completely at the time and it just went over my head. You can search it on Google and it's there to read if you want to check it out and let me know what you think about it. But anyway, for me it's about the music. Aesthetica really piqued my interest. It sounded really big, it sounded really bold, it wasn't like any other black metal stuff that I'd heard around that time. Uh, and I ended up seeing them live, I think it was 2012 or it could be wrong, uh, at Hellfest I think it was, in France. And if my memory serves me correctly, and I have seen a lot of bands at a lot of festivals, so I don't remember exactly every single one. Uh, I believe they were just a two-piece at the time. They might have been in the process of breaking up or, you know, lineup change or I don't know what the hell was happening. It was a good show, I remember that much. And as much as I liked the Aesthetica, with the, the soaring melodies and the synthesized chanting, the jazzy post-rock elements in there. I kind of just dropped off the radar for me. The, the, the latest stuff I didn't really listen to. Uh, but when I saw that they were bringing out uh, an album this month, November, I thought, hey, uh, check it out. See, Let's see what's happening in the liturgy camp. And uh, apparently there's a lot been happening. Hunter came out as trans. There's a picture of them naked on the cover, which kind of seemed like a really big statement, like this is who I am. So when I was reading all this, I saw some early reviews around the same time, and it was very divisive. Some people saying that it was genius, this new album, the, uh, the origin of the Alimonius. Some people were hating on it quite a lot, I'm guessing, Quite a few of those people were the true cult black metal raw necro lo-fi fuck you guys this is them now oh this it's in black and white yeah and then maybe like footage of a burning church lower the lower the opacity on that yeah that's better you go oh, black metal yeah those guys at any rate I was really interested to hear what it was because. All accounts were saying that it was very different, and it really is. Is it a is it a black metal project anymore? I don't think so. I think it's gone beyond the boundaries of labels like that. It's really unique. Basically, the the music is like it starts off with really mini minimalist orchestral passages that lead into you know, disjointed jazz noodling guitars that leads into big black metal sounding stuff that are kind of recognized from the Aesthetica days 
but taken up a few notches, like even more bombastic and stuff. Going back down to minimalist again, a few electronic elements in there, then loud jangly guitars with some beautiful orchestral string accompaniments over the top. There's a lot going on here. It's just brilliant how it ebbs and flows. It goes from quiet and unassuming to loud and bombastic over the period of a song or over the period of a couple of songs. It's all, it all, always building up to something and the payoff is always more worthwhile because of that build up. My words aren't gonna do it any good. You really need to go check it out for yourself and uh, let me know what you think unless you true cold black metal necro one of those guys. I think it's an excellent album. It's probably gonna be on my best of 2020 list so far. Really worth sitting down with, spending a lot of time with and, and unpacking for yourself. I'm going to keep it extreme. I'm going to head to Australia now for two bands. The first of which is a band called Mumbles Cross. They released an album called Arcana, Scrying and Revelation. It's out now through Hell's Headbangers and what's that I can hear? It's them. This is a band from Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. Uh, I think this is their third full length album. They first caught my attention in 2018 with the full length album called The uh, Sultar of the Royal Dragon Court, which was also through Hell's Headbangers, I believe. Really hard to put a label on them. I think that they're a black and thrash band, but I'd, I'd just put them in the more broad category of extreme metal because there's black elements, black and thrash, death metal elements in there. Like uh, with Salta of the Royal Dragon Court, it was a bit muddier, I felt. Uh, the vocals were quite a bit lower and more gravelly. But with Arcana, Sprang and Revelation, it seems like the production is quite a lot better. I, I found it a little bit cleaner, but not to the detriment of the heaviness of the music. The vocals were a bit higher and screechier and uh, more in the realm of black metal, necro uh, more black metal sounding uh, than, than the, the deeper, gravelly, raspier death metal vocals that I found previously. And I just really wanted to bring them up because I feel like they're not getting a whole lot of attention. What more could you want? High-speed riffing, blasting drums, just a really good, solid, aggressive mixture of different sub-genres from within the extreme metal sphere. But with, I, I feel like there's also a few nods to the more traditional metal kind of stuff. I don't know, have a listen, you tell me. That's uh, Mongrel's Cross. And the other Australian band that I wanted to bring up that released an album in November is Drowning the Light. The new album is On Astral Wings of Vampiric Shadows, and that's out via Dark Adversary Productions, and here's a little taste. So this is a one-man black metal band uh, by the guy who goes by the name of Asgore. He runs Dark Adversary Productions, a record label. 
And he's also appeared on a bunch of different projects, albums, uh, but my favorite of these outside of uh, Drowning the Light is a band called uh, Black Funeral. He was on Anku and the Deathfire LP. He was on the Dust and Darkness EP from Black Funeral. And the LP from earlier this year called The Scourge of La Nashtu. Uh, another another album that's probably going to be on my top however many of uh, top albums of 2020 really worth checking out but I'm not here to talk about Black Funeral as much as I could all for this whole video I'm here to talk about Drowning the Light and the new album on Astral Wings of Wimperic Shadows the band is usually very prolific a lot a lot of uh, Big discography out there on Bandcamp, uh, really worth checking out. This album isn't on Spotify, uh, so it's not going to be on my uh, playlist, my new release playlist for Death Tour But Metal for this month. So, but definitely worth hunting down on on Bandcamp. He's already released a like a not really an EP, but a, a collection of tracks. Uh, earlier this year called uh, Sigils and Ciphers. Uh, there was one new Dragon the Light track on there. The rest were demos that were previously only obtainable to those that were able to solve the riddles and ciphers surrounding the previous three uh, Dragon the Light releases, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's always a lot of mythology, demonology, folklore, mysticism, philosophy surrounding the the lyrical content of these albums and around the the concepts of the albums and the EPs and really interesting dark grimy vampiric demonic stuff and as prolific as Drowning the Light is on Astral Wings is the first full-length album since 2018's Excellent Curse Below the Waves, so it's been a little while between uh, full-length releases, but uh, a couple of EPs in between. That's not bad. What does it sound like? It's raw black metal. I, th I feel like with this album, the synths really come to the forefront, uh, which I really enjoyed. Ascors labeled the music as uh, melancholic and majestic vampiric black metal, which I feel like is pretty spot on because I could see this kind of music being played in a dark, grimy, vampiric crypt, black blood oozing in black metal. But okay, I gotta stop doing it. It kind of hurts when I do that. It's weird. Okay, enough. Go away. But yeah, so if that interests you, check out Drowning the Light on Astral Wings of. When Perry Shadows. And I'm gonna leave you with that, but before I go, November had so many new releases, it was so hard to figure out which ones to talk about. So I wanted to just get do a real quick run through of a bunch of releases that I didn't have time to talk about, or I haven't had a chance to fully take in and, and listen to and give them the time that they deserve. Uh, so I thought I'd just do real quick fire. New releases coming at your peace. My friends from Sydney, Reva, they released a single called Broken Smoker. They're kind of thrash, thrashy kind of trad metal. Reva also did a split album, a uh, collaborative album with uh, Crawlesis called The Nobody Crowd. Again, more thrashy trad metal stuff. Nada Sadek from Egypt, the crazy Egyptian artist dude that uh, puts together these really cool uh, bands, uh, released the first EP for a while called the Serapium. It uh, features Carl Sanders from uh, Nile, Derek Roddy, who's been in Hate Eternal, Malevolent Creation, Nile, and more. And also on guitars, he has uh, Mahmoud. Gekakusu, I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, he's been part of bands Azeroth and Perversion and probably a bunch more. Really crazy over-the-top arty death metal stuff, really worth your time. 
check that out. Hjelvik, Welcome to Hell, uh, the, the ex-lead singer from Cavell Attack with a kind of punky Viking metal album with a few black metal elements. Basically all the stuff that I thought Cavell Attack should have for me to get into them, but then I never really got into them. I found it here on this album. Beherit, their first album since shit, probably 2009 with Engram. Uh, they released an album called Bardo Exist. It sounds like the soundtrack to a horror movie based on one of David Lynch's nightmares about an Hieronymus Bosch painting. Interesting stuff. Mork from Norway released an EP called Pesta. I haven't had a chance to really sit down and listen to it yet, but they're always good. Kedava released an album, Header and Bile. It's death metal. It sounds good so far. Macabre released their first album in a long time. I, I didn't look up how long it was. Carnival of Killers. A lot of people find it gimmicky. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, crazy death metal songs about serial killers with some polka and all different weird elements in there. And finally, Teutonic Thrashes, Black and Thrashes, Sodom, released Genesis XIX. Uh, do you know what Sodom sound like? This album seems to be a bit more of the same. From what I've heard so far, it sounded like one of the stronger efforts but from this band in a while. A little bit of black mixed in with the Teutonic Thrash sound. I've enjoyed it so far, and that has been Death Door by Metals. Prick up your ears. If you've enjoyed it, if you're still watching, comment below, please. Let me know. If you want to hear more new releases that came out in the month of November, I've got a Spotify playlist that I will put the link somewhere. You'll be able to find it. If you're watching this video, you'll be able to see it somewhere. Link to the Spotify playlist for Death to Opa Metal uh, November. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the releases that I talked about. And I hope you just enjoy metal in general. Tell me, tell me what you've been enjoying lately. I really want to hear it. I've been Gary Grimm. You've been watching. Prick up your ears. See you next time.